Hello guys. So <clears throat> today I'm gonna solve this problem. Uh, it's kind of an approximate method problem also, um, but it's a it's a very important example for several reasons. First reason is a you have a combination of columns and trusses, which is a real life situation. This is what you see a lot of times. And how do you treat this? Is this a truss? Is this a column? What is this part? Is this member part of the truss? Uh, I don't know. So that's important. And the other important part also is that it, it's the problem is telling you that the A and B are pins. So basically what you have here is a pin and you have another pin here, meaning you're going to have two reactions here, AY and AX. I should I should draw it backwards because I know the reactions are going to be in this way. And then you're going to ask me, how do you know that? Well, because I'm me. Of course I know what is the direction. But how do you know that? Well, you can know that for simple inspection. If these two forces are applied here, they are going to produce a moment in this direction, meaning in the other direction you have to have a moment also acting opposite to that provided by these forces. Now, uh, the main thing that students do when they receive this problem, they are used to have fixed support, fixed support here, and then automatically hinge, hinge. And this is not the case, because if you put a hinge here and a hinge here, this is going to be highly unstable and the whole thing is going to collapse. I know this is statically indeterminate. And I know we're going to be using either the portal or cantilever method, which for this example is going to yield exactly the same solutions. Uh, but which one are we going to use? That's a more interesting thing. So what are we going to do is this. If you use uh, the method of the portal, let's say, what is the condition for the method of the portal? It says place hinges when hinges are needed. That's the first the first thing. Well, we don't need any hinge. And the second one is the second one was getting the condition that all the shear is absorbed by the columns equally, except for the internal columns, that they absorb twice as much shear as the external column. But in this case, this is a pin, this is a pin, this is the hinge that we should create it, it's already created there for us. And then what we have to do is just uh, assume that AX and BX are equal. So that's what we have to say, AX equal BX. And it's going to be half of the horizontal load. So it's going to be 4 plus A divided by 2, which is 6. So now I know that this is 6, and this is 6 kN. After that, you can do summation of a uh, forces in X, summation of forces in Y, you can do summation of moment, well, summation of forces in X we did. Now if I want to calculate A, Y, then I do summation of moments at B. Okay, if you do summation of moments at B, what do you get? Summation of moments at B. Here you have 8 times 5, negative, and then you have 4 times this, which is 6.5, plus AY times 4 equals 0 and you can solve for AY, 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 terminator calculator. AY is uh, 40 plus, uh, this is 27, 40. Sixteen point five. Sixteen point five. Check again. Yeah, forty plus twenty six divided by two divided by four. Sixteen point five equals BY. Because there's no other forces in BY. Kilonewton. Now basically we already have our reactions. Now what is the problem asking? Determine the moment diagram for the column AGF. Okay, the moment diagram for the column AGF. If I'm going to use only this one, I I guess that we should do the, the
the shear diagram first, and we can do that. And look what happens here now. If you're going to do that, and you are isolating these, because I need to calculate the forces in these bars. This is the part that I was telling you that is important. Because we calculated the reactions here, but this is a pin, and these are pins here also. This is a pin here. So we have to treat these as they are. So basically, we have a column here with a 4 kilonewton force. And then you have this other force, which it has to be opposite, right? If you make that, this is going to be the bar uh, Fe. Fe. And I know this is just a, a pin support like that. And then I have this part here. Because it's a pin support and this is a two force member, I know the force is going to be in this direction. Then you have this. I'm not saying this is a pin, okay? This is a column. I'm going to put it thicker to differentiate that thing. And here I have a pin, right there. So that means that this force is going to be acting either tension or compression. My assumption is going to be in that way. Why? Because I want to. Now you have this other force which is applied to the column, and this is a keep here. And now at this point you have another pin. And that pin is going to have two forces, one force like that and one force like that. Once again, my assumption is, and you are going to have this force here, which is a Y, 16.5. And AX uh, 6, like that. Now, this is pointing down. This is going to go up. I'm assuming this is going to go in this direction. And if, if it's not going in that direction, it doesn't matter. The, the sign is going to tell me, right? If it's negative, it's negative. I just change it, and that's it. So this is GE. And this is GC. And then I have to calculate these forces before doing the diagram because those are forces applied over there. How do I do that? Well, the simplest thing is this. Summation of forces in Y equals 0. If I do summation of forces in Y equals 0, then I'm going to have that. Uh, I need this angle, this angle here. How much is this angle? This angle alpha is inverse tangent of 1.5 divided by 2. Or I can say that this angle alpha also is 4 is 3, 3 multiplying this 1.5 by 2, right? 1.5, 2. But instead of saying 1.5, 2, I'm going to say 3. 2 times 2 is 4, so this is going to be 5. I can use this or I can calculate the angle, whatever way you want to. I know now that if I if I do summation of forces in Y, I have negative 16.5, and the vertical component of this is plus GE. The vertical component is GE sine alpha, or is 3 fifth, 3 fifth of alpha, I mean 3 fifth of GE equals 0. And then from here, you can calculate the force uh, GE. GE. There you go. How much is the force GE? I don't know. 27 point 5. GE equals 27.5 in, in tension, I assume. So it's going to be in tension. Tension, correct. There you go. Okay. Now, what, what else do we do? I can do summation of moments here for calculating Fe, for example. Summation of moments at a, what is that point? Summation of moments at G equals zero. Like that. 
So if I do that, I'm going to do summation of moments here. This is the point G. 4 times this distance, 1.5. So it's going to be negative 4 times 1.5 plus this one, plus Fe times the same distance, 1.5. What else? Negative 4 plus Fe minus 6 times this high, which is 5, minus 6 times 5 equals 0. So I can solve for Fe. This passes through the point, this 2 passes through the point, and this one passes through the point, so there's nothing else. So Fe is going to be 30 plus. 24 24 24 and that 24 is in compression because that's what I assumed before and it was positive and now you just do summation of forces in X equals 0 and once you have summation of forces in X equals 0 then you can uh, calculate GC so you have 4 plus 8 minus 6 minus 24 plus GE the horizontal component of GE I'm gonna put it like that but you know GE is 27.5 and the horizontal component is gonna be 4 fifth uh, what else minus GC equals 0 so GC should be equal to This is 6, this is 18, negative 18, minus uh, GE, 27.5 times, that's going to be equal to 4, 4 kilonewton. And that 4 kilonewton, you see, I assume it was in compression, and it is in compression. So now we have all the forces. And once you have all the forces, we are ready to build a shear moment diagram if we want to, which is what the problem is asking us to do. Now, keep in mind that if I want to uh, calculate all the other forces, I can. I can move to this part here, and I say that GC is going to be acting here now in this direction, entering in this way. Now, uh, this. Fe is acting here, it doesn't mean that it's going to be acting in that direction. This is going to go in this way, so I have to take care of this uh, joint. What is going to happen here, probably, is that uh, the some of the forces are going to switch, especially the diagonals. The diagonals are going to switch. If the diagonal in this case is pointing in this direction, in the other case it's going to be pointing in this direction. And that makes sense. If you see the moment is acting in this way, in this way, this is going to be pulled and this is going to be compressed. This is going to be pulled and the other one is going to be compressed. That's if I want to calculate that part. But it doesn't matter. You can go method of joints and analyze this joint. You know these two, the only unknown will be these two. And that's it. You have that. Now the problem is asking me the, the moment for this column. So let's do the moment for that column. If that is the column, I'm going to reproduce the column here. Or try to at least. And then I'm going to put every single force in that column. This is going to be 4, going to be 8. Now here you're going to have Fe, which is 24. And then you're going to have GC, which is 4. But at the same point, here I'm going to have GE, GE which is 27.5. That GE in reality is two forces or two components. That component is going to be, uh, where am I, where am I, 4 fifth, the horizontal component in this case is 4 fifth of 27.5. which is 22 
acting in this direction. I know you were screaming at me, yelling at me. And this one is going to be 3 fifths of 27.5. is 16.5 and I don't know why I calculated because I knew it was 16.5 from before this is the reaction 16.5 I'm gonna put it in blue and this was the other reaction which is 6 in that direction now if we're gonna plot this and get the moment diagram well remember I always use my local coordinates for that I say this is y this is x so I'm gonna plot my my diagram like this and my shear diagram is going to start first here shear diagram now in the shear diagram this is going to start going up here jump up to six and it's going to go constant up to this point now at this point look what happened I have 22 in this direction 8 in that direction and 4 up all of these three forces are acting at the same point so we better have the resultant force which is going to be 22 plus 4 is 80, uh, 30 uh, look at my god 22 plus 8 is 30 30 minus 4 is 26 26 is acting downwards downwards 26 the resultant force from this is going to be 26 in that direction and I have 6 so this is going to come back and it's going to come down to uh, 20 the jump and then from here this is going to go constant since I don't have any other force applied here and this is going to be a resultant force between these two forces here which are at the same point also I'm going to have force resultant force of these two of 20 which is going to make this go go here and go to yes it closed now if you want to know the moment diagram well I don't have any concentrated moment, obviously, this is a pin, this is, a, this is just part of the column, and so there's not any concentrated moment. Now, this distance from here to here and from here to here, this is 5 and this is 1.5. The area of this is 6 times 5, this is positive, this is negative, so that means that this is going to go straight to this point, and that point is 30, positive, the area of this and then at that point it's going to go and then I have 20 20 times 1.5 is the area this is negative, this is positive negative 30 goes, closes, 0 yes and that's it you know, easy problem, simple problem important problem because this is what you see on the street all the time watch the next video because in the next video now I'm going to solve the same one, assuming these two are fixed, and you're going to see how that thing changed. See you later, guys.